Air pressure is powerful. Put a simple index card over half a glass of water, invert it, get it sealed around the edges, and you can see that air pressure alone is strong enough to hold this water in the glass and hold this index card to it. Over 14 pounds per square inch of air pressure. Here's another good illustration of air pressure. Put a small balloon in a vacuum pump, pump out the air. As less and less air surrounds the balloon, the air pressure inside the balloon expands the balloon to almost fill the chamber. Now I'm going to let the air back in to the chamber and let's see what happens. While all that pressure back on the balloon and the balloon shrinks back down to normal size. Think about this when you reflect back on the experiment you just conducted. Let's take a look at the soda can. We took a simple soda can, empty, and we put a little bit of water in it, made sure the can was open and empty, then put a few centimeters of water in the bottom of the can. Right now inside the can is a little bit of water, air, then we add some heat or energy. This begins to heat the air molecules inside of the can. When we start, we have the same number of air molecules inside the can as outside the can because they're able to flow in and out of the can through the opening. Everything in nature tries to equalize, and so that's what happens inside the can and outside the can. Now the molecules inside the can begin heating up as well as the water, and they start bouncing around because we've added energy to them. Well, as I said, everything in nature likes to equalize, so it's getting a little crowded in there, and some of the air molecules simply leave the can. They want to go out where there's more room. So now we have less air molecules inside the can than outside of the can, but the can is being filled up by the bouncing around of those air molecules. Next, we invert the can into a bath of some cooler water. Hopefully you were careful when you did this. Right now the air pressure outside the can and inside of the can is still equal because the molecules inside have bounced around and helped fill the can. Now let's go ahead and flip that can into a cool pan of water. One thing that we do by flipping the can is closing off this opening. Once we close off that opening with water, no more air can move in or out of the can. If your experiment didn't work very well, Add a few ice cubes to your pan of water. Now, of course, the air outside the can is still the same temperature, still the same number of molecules, and thus still the same pressure. But inside the can, we have lost air molecules. But now, the energy that was used before to keep that can expanded by bouncing around those air molecules is gone. We've taken the energy away and by cooling down the molecules inside the can, they've condensed and come closer together. The pressure is the same all around outside, pressing down with over 14 pounds of square on each square inch, but inside the can we have very little pressure, just like our vacuum in our balloon. We've created a partial vacuum in our can. We have very little pressure inside the can. Think about that when you describe your, your experiment and what happened in your experiment.